Good morning. Uh, uh, I will speak about uh, just governance and unjust governance too. Uh, Somalis have learned how vi vital just governance is. Unjust governance was a principal cause of the collapse of the Somali state. The challenge for us and the international community is now to introduce just governance in a country where there is no state institutions. Somalia has just marked the 50th anniversary of its independence on 1st July 1960. From the very beginning, there was unjust distribution of national resources, social opportunities, employment, promotions, everything was done in a corrupt way. This was due to ignorance of state affairs. Those who took over from the colonial powers had no education. Only three of the first uh, parliament, a parliament of 123 MBs, had a first degree. And they were very young and inexperienced. All the others were ordinary elders and businessmen who knew nothing about how to run a state. We inherited from the colonial power unjust distribution of uh, political power. For example, the capital, Mogadishu, which had half a million citizens, had two members of parliament, while a small village in the rural area, in the interior, uh, whose people had supported the colonial power had the same number. The government just accepted the situation they inherited from the colonial power, but with nepotism and corruption. It was one of the causes of the military coup in 1969 after nine years of civilian rule. In doing this, the military had the wholehearted support of the people. They started well, building schools, hospitals, uh, roads, and correcting previous mistakes. But after some years, the regime went the same way as the civilian government and became a harsh dictatorship, suppressing basic rights. I had to apologize many times to Somalis for having stayed so long as a cabinet minister in the military regime which caused so much destruction. This regime provoked armed opposition groups to form. I finally defected and joined one of the opposition groups in 1989, and the regime fell in 1991. However, because the armed opposition groups were organized on clan lines, they could not agree on how to form an alternative government, and the result is that the country has suffered nearly 20 years of statelessness. When the regime fell, there was fighting and chaos, and anyone who had money left. Uh, large numbers managed to reach Europe, North America, and Australia as refugees. Everyone was suspicious of people of other clans, and every, every sub-clan or even sub-sub-clan established associations of their own. They used to send money back to their clans at home, contributing to the chaos and violence. Now, the situation is different because gradually they are learning from the societies they have been living in. They see people of different social, religious, and ethnic backgrounds living together side by side. The Somali diaspora in Britain, which is one of the largest, has received valuable guidance from the Institute of Change. The Institute of Change UK helped, helped organize an NGO called Somali Initiative for Dialogue and Democracy with the aim of reconciling Somalis with each other and with their host communities. We have organized di in, in dialogue facilitation for leading figures of different uh, clan backgrounds and intergeneration dialogues on the theme on the theme peace begins at home peace begins at home 
Monthly meetings continue the development of participants of these programs. Large groups have participated in co-conferences. We have also translated extracts of the Imam and Basra, uh, which have transmitted on Somali uh, language uh, TV uh, with, with a very positive response. These and other activities have contributed to a growing unity among, among Somali diaspora, among, among, among diaspora Somalis who are tired of conflict. Now, when there is a gathering of the Somali diaspora, they come together in their thousands, whereas before it was not, it was not possible. We also have the long-term aim of persuading skilled Somalis to return to Somalia, back to Somalia, to participate in reconstruction and, uh, and reconciliation. This will respond to the real problem for Somalia, which is the total brain drain. In other African countries, the brain drain is maybe 5% or 10%. But in Somalia, the brain drain is total. The present situation is that the Somalis in the country are still divided along crown lines. They have been more, they, there have been more than 16 reconciliation uh, abuse conferences, but they, were, but they were all held outside Somalia, and the Somalis didn't consider them as genuine, but imposed it from outside, particularly uh, by the neighboring countries. For this reason, the Somalis didn't give their wholehearted support to governments created by these conferences. I know this because I served in one from, from 2000 to, to, to 2003. Similarly, international military interventions are counterproductive because they are always perceived as taking side of one clan against another. The situation is currently worsening with a huge humanitarian crisis caused by fighting, displacing large numbers, uh, large, uh, numbers of people and preventing supplies humanitarian, humanitarian, uh, uh, to reach the, uh, the poor people. As the top-down approach has failed, many in the diaspora are considering that the bottom-up approach should be tried. I have written a, a paper outlining a possible way of implementing uh, 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 this. Instead of sending 20,000 foreign, foreign peacekeeping peace troops, it would be better to send several thousand skilled Somalis to return to the country as facilitators of dialogue, reconciliation, and democracy. Under the auspices of the UN, these uh, retainees would hold reconciliation conferences in towns and villages and set up local administrative councils which would establish some measure of law and order. These councils would then send representatives to a national conference from which a national central authority would be created. I'm now thinking that I should go to different parts of Somalia to express my apology and with others to teach how to create local and state institutions, law and order, and show that the international community is ready to help us. I wish to express my appreciation for the core form for human security. We are a people who are in great need of this philosophy of international cooperation. I also wish to express my gratitude to Initiative of Change in general. The support of their excellencies, uh, Cornel uh, Samaruga and Mohammed Sahnoun has been very valuable. They know well the situation in Somalia and their reputation and name is recognized by every one of us. I would also like to express my gratitude to the Institute of Change UK in particular, Jim Baynard Smith, the late Fiona Leggard, and Peter Riddle. Without their help, without their help, none of what we, has, what we have done 
uh, would not have been uh, uh, possible. I identify, I identified my, uh, I identified with the Cambodian speakers yesterday. Uh, their country has a similar background of, of dictatorship and destruction. They said yesterday that they had come out of hell, but are not yet in a democratic society. I say we are still in hell, but we hold on to the hope of a better future. I thank you very much and ask your prayers for all those in the world who are in distress. God bless you all.